Okay, so now the question in front of us is a non-aqueous solvent like ether is added to the mixture of LiCl, NiCl and KCl. Now, which amongst these three compounds will be extracted into ether? What do you think, Devansh? Uh, first of all, we know the basic concept of solvation is like dissolves in like. So, as we know, ether is a non-polar compound. Therefore, the compound which will be the most covalent will dissolve in ether. Okay. So, here we are going to uh, learn the basic use of the most used concept uh, uh, and the most important of chemical bonding, the Fajan rules. So, as we know, uh, here the anion Cl- is common for all. Therefore, our focus is basically on cation Li+. Plus. Na plus and K plus. Uh, we know they all lie in the same group and uh, they all have same charge that is plus 1 and radius down the group increases. Ok, so from lithium to potassium the size is constantly increasing? Yeah. Ok. The size is increasing down the group as shell is adding. Ok. Uh, therefore, charge by radius ratio is decreasing All right. from lithium to potassium okay. and hence the polarizing power is decreasing. Okay. Uh, therefore, Li plus is the strongest polarizing agent because of its small size because yeah. the charge is pretty much the same hmm. and uh, as we know uh, if the charge by radius ratio uh, the more it is for lithium plus it is the maximum as radius is least Okay. So, the uh, property of anion, for property of cation is to polarize an anion. Okay. And the smaller the charge of cation, the more efficient the polarizer it is. Okay. Therefore, Li plus is the strongest polarizing agent and hence as we know, polarizing power is directly proportional to covalent character. So, Li plus will be the one which will be extracted into the ether. Alright, so uh, how is polarizing power sort of related with covalent character? Uh, like we know uh, for a molecule to be a covalent basically it depends upon how much a cation can pull the shell or the electron cloud of a nion okay. if they are containing the same charge okay. so if it is more smaller then it will be more concentrated. The charge by ra uh, radius ratio is nothing. It just tell about the density or the concentration of the charge on in cation. Okay. If the density is more, so its polarizing power is automatically more on the anion cloud. Definitely, that I've understood. What I'm trying to understand is how is polarizing power related to covalent character. I'm uh, not questioning that the polarizing power for lithium is high. If the molecule is 100%, uh, if the molecule can 100% polarize, okay. if it can distort the whole electron cloud, okay. then we say the molecule is 100% covalent. Oh, so the more polarizing it is, the more efficient the sharing of electrons between yeah. the two is. And therefore, it is a better 
or it has greater covalent, greater covalent character. character. Oh, all right. So from this question, we've learned that uh, polarizing power is very important towards calculating the covalent character of a compound, and uh, we also well revised the concept of like di like dissolves like. If you're going to have a polar solvent, it'll be easier to dissolve a polar compound in it. If you're going to have a non-polar solvent, it'll be easier to have a non-polar solvent dissolved in it. The same for this, where we see if it's a non-aqueous solution like ether, uh, having a greater covalent character is going to be useful if in terms of a higher solubility to the particular compound, right? Yeah. So, I think we've covered these two concepts here. Let's move on. Hmm. Okay. Alright, having covered ionic character and hybridization and solubility and boiling points, let us come to a very interesting question, something which has a high probability of being asked in the JE as well, which is where you have the structure in front of you and you've been asked to find the hybridization of each atom in the structure as such. So this is going to be slightly long winded. This is a question where time becomes really important. The quicker we can do it, the better and more useful it is for us. So Devansh now is going to show us how to solve this question in the quickest and most efficient manner possible. Yeah. So earlier we did a concept of uh, how to find the hybridization of atom or central atom from the formula. Now let us go and for a shortcut approach, we directly find X is number of sigma bonds attached to a compound with okay. a lone with accounting the lone pairs. All right. Remember to always count the lone pairs. Uh, like let us consider C one, two, three. C one. Now C one has one sigma over here. One sigma. One sigma. So x is 3 implies sp2 direct. Now for 2 again what 1 about, sigma. Okay, so hold on but what about uh, oh so you directly calculated x you are not calculating yeah. v or g here. Yeah because. I am not doing anything I am just counting the sigma bonds and doing them. Oh. This is shorter, shortest method. Oh <laughs> interesting I guess we should have <laughs> learned this earlier. <laughs> Oh, so this is what we were talking about initially when we said you should remember the formula but we will come to a shortcut later. Yeah. Alright, so let's go ahead. Again x is 3, sp2 and this one 4 bonds, x is 4, sp3. Alright, that but was quick. now for oxygen, so what you will you say, uh, oxygen has two lone pairs, two sigma bonds, so x is 4, sp3, hey na? but uh, is it sp3? I guess it would be sp3, right, because we've counted the sigma bonds and we've counted the number of lone pairs, lone pairs associated. You seem very smug about it, so I think it might not be 4, <laughs> but why don't you tell me? The answer is sp2. Okay, <laughs> so uh, why is that so? The reason is that this lone pair, it's involved in conjugation with this pi bond. Oh yeah, it's resonating like structure. This lone pair, it will go over here and this will go over here and the resonating structure with which it will form is So basically one lone pair is not available only. Okay, because that gets counted as a... For hybridization. 
Yes, that gets counted as a pi bond or a single bond. Uh, uh, this lone pair is not available as it's available is already involved in conjugation. Okay. So therefore, we will not count this. But then, based on the formula that you told me, number of sigma bonds along with uh, the lone pairs. So there is one sigma bond and one lone pair, right? There is two sigma bonds, one with OH. If we say in this molecule, okay, uh, it's like uh, this sigma bond, this sigma bond, and this lone pair. But what about the other hybridization structure where we have a double bond between C and O, and it's a hybrid structure, na? So I'm guessing even after hybridization, its uh, geometry still has to remain the same, right? In one resonating structure, it cannot have an yeah. Its geometry is still same, na? It's still sp2. Okay, so if it's still sp2, so uh, this is the whole reason that it is sp2 because here one sigma. Another sigma and one lone pair is only present. If it, if uh, the other lone pair might also be present, then it should be sp3. Okay. But that is the only case. It is not sp3. It is sp2. No, no. The reason why I ask is you remember in the first bit when we were explaining the formula of x is hmm. equal to half v plus g plus a minus c, we categorically said if it's a double bond, we don't calculate the v. So how about we use that methodology, the same methodology we had there, to try and find out. The hybridization for this. Let's try out the longer method. Okay. The half. The longer method for this one. Yeah. For this one, uh, it is going to be again uh, uh, one hydrogen. Okay. Uh, basically, we have to calculate the longer method for this. It's not valid for resonantic structures. And in that also, we have to skip one lone pair in long method also. Because this lone pair is involved in resonance. Resonance. Okay. So you're basically saying when we're trying to calculate it using that formula, it's not really going to work out. No, that formula is going to work out, but in that formula also, we need to keep in mind that while resonance, we have to skip one lone pair. Okay. So the formula is correct, but our understanding of the application of it is to an extent limited. There are yeah. cases where we need to consider other things before we apply the formula. Huh. And okay. the most important part is the resonance part. If resonance is involved, then we need to consider that a lone pair is not involved, and hence it hybrid x will value will decrease by one in this case. Now the question comes: Why the second lone pair is also not involved? Because it has not got any facility to get involved in hybridization over here. Okay, all right. If here uh, one more double bond might be there, or some other structure to support a resonance for the second lone pair also. Okay. Then the hybridization might go to sp also. Okay, so that's a possibility that it could just be sp. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so now we know a very interesting example of how uh, things can potentially go wrong in chemistry. You're on a roll and you know you figured out three of them perfectly correctly. Turns out the fourth one shaped out to be wrong. So the thing to take away from this is you have to be very careful about structures where resonance is involved. And the moment resonance is involved, you should look at the other resonating structures and then take a call.